Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician, and today I'm going to provide a quick explanation of why the hazard function can be written as the probability density function divided by the survival function. In an earlier video, I defined the hazard function in the context of survival analysis for events that are defined on a continuous time scale. So if you haven't watched that video yet, or if you, if you don't know what the hazard function is, I encourage you to watch that first. Now, in that video, I defined the hazard function as the limit as delta t goes to, goes to zero of the probability that the event x happens in some interval between t and t plus delta t, conditioned on the event that x is bigger than t, all divided by delta t. That is a big mouthful. And my goal in this video is to show you that this complicated mathematical expression is exactly equal to that fraction down there. Let's start with that numerator. That is a conditional probability, so we can rewrite that. And by definition, it is equal to the probability of the intersection between the first and the second events divided by the probability of that second event. So let's do that. Now, I hope that you can recognize that those two events can be written on a number line. Here's what I mean. Here's a number line with the times t and t plus delta t. And this event right here is the event x is bigger than t. Notice how I used an open circle to denote that x is strictly bigger than t. Now here, is the event t is between, t is less than x, which is less than t plus delta t. Notice how I've used a closed circle to denote that x is less than or equal to t plus delta t. Now, I hope that you can recognize that this event down here is a subset of this event. If you are between t and t plus delta t, if you're bigger than t but less than or equal to t plus delta t, then you're definitely bigger than t. So to illustrate this, you can draw a Venn diagram for yourself. So here is the event x is between t and t plus delta t. And I will draw a, an oval around that. And in this rectangle, we have the event x is bigger than t. So. If the joint probability of these two events, sorry, if, the, if this event is a subset of this event, then this joint probability of these two events is simply the probability of this first event. So we can simplify that numerator. This probability down here has a special name. It's called the survival function.
and it is usually denoted by S of t. I hope that you can recognize that the survival function is simply 1 minus the cumulative distribution function. relationship will be very useful in a later video when I talk about the relationships between any combination of two of those three quantities. But until next time. For now, let's simplify that numerator. Or let's elaborate on that. Let's talk about that numerator even further. That numerator can be written as probability that x is less than or equal to t plus delta t minus the probability that x is less than or equal to t. Now, hopefully you recognize that these two quantities in the numerator are simply the CDF evaluated at t plus delta t and t. If you notice, this whole fraction, this whole expression right here, excluding the survival function, is quite simply the definition of the derivative of the CDF. It is the limit, as delta t goes to zero, of the CDF evaluated at t plus delta t minus the CDF at t, all divided by delta t. If you go back to first year calculus on the definition of the derivative, that is exactly the definition of the derivative applied to the CDF, which of course is the probability density function, or PDF. And so that is why the hazard function can be written as the PDF divided by the survival function. So I hope that that explanation was useful to you. As always, you can visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician, to get your daily lesson on statistics, machine learning, and chemistry on weekdays. And once a week, I will provide my very popular, full-length, in-depth explanations of a statistical machine learning or chemical concept, often with R programming examples, or an advice column about professional development in science and statistics. As well, you can follow me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.